so in the previous lecture we have seen what is the direct product and we calculated the direct product of various irreducible representations so in this lecture we will be looking at how direct product is used to solve quantum mechanical problems problems of quantum mechanics so direct product applications so let us start with what we know so we know what is an even function and what is an odd function right so let us suppose that fx is an even function and if it is so then assuming that it is continuous over all range the integration of fx will not be equal to zero because it's an even function whereas if fx is an odd function then the integration of fx dx will be equal to zero right so we can see this example as uh, cos x so cos x dx over all space will not be equal to zero whereas sin x dx over all space will be equal to zero so why is it so because let's draw this function to understand it more clearly so if we draw the cosine function it goes like this right and then on the other side it goes like this so assuming this is my x-axis and this is my y-axis so that means if i am putting a plane which is yz plane so sigma yz if i am putting then if i operate sigma yz on to the cos x i will get cos x right that means the character under this is plus one right so this would imply that cos x is invariant under sigma yz okay so this tells us that invariant because our character is plus one when we apply sigma yz onto cos x right so now we understood when we how we apply cos various symmetry operations we can onto different molecules so similarly we can apply this symmetry function symmetry operation onto a mathematical function as well so whereas if you apply sigma yz onto sin x you will not get plus one as a character right so now let us think that you have a integration to solve where you have two functions f a f b you don't know whether it is even and odd or the product of that is even or odd it is sometimes not easy or straightforward to calculate but we can see how in context of symmetry and group theory we can solve this integration or we can at least tell whether it is going to be zero or non-zero so let's say if this integrand f a f b so let's call this integrand the product of f a and f b is invariant under all the symmetry operations a molecule has so we are talking about a molecule and the corresponding symmetry operations so whenever we are considering a molecule then it has certain symmetry operations and then it falls under a particular point group so in that context if two functions which form basis of certain representations so they are invariant under all the symmetry operations a molecule has then so let's call this as i then the integration will not be equal to zero that means it is behaving as even function just like we saw the case of cosine x right so just like we saw the case here cos x dx so because it is invariant under sigma yz we saw that it is not equal to zero similarly 
the integrand is invariant under all the symmetry operations. Here the symmetry operation was we chose was only sigma yz. But here we are saying that if the integration is invariant under all the symmetry operations, then i will not be equal to 0. Otherwise, if it is variant, that means if it changes by application of a symmetry operation, then the integration will straight away go to 0. So it is a very useful thing in quantum mechanical problems whether an integration will be equal to 0 will vanish or will not vanish. So we will see that. Let's see. So what does it imply? This means that so if this product f a f b forms basis of a totally symmetric representation. So we know what a totally symmetric representation is. It carries one under all the symmetry operations. So if f a f b the product of this or the integrand here forms the basis of a totally symmetric representation that would mean that it is invariant under all the symmetry operations and then the integrand or the i will not be equal to 0. So or let's say if fafb forms basis of a reducible representation right it is possible that it can form basis for a irreducible or a reducible representation we don't know so let's say if it forms the basis of a reducible representation then at least one of the component irs or ir representations must be totally symmetric representation and in that case i will not be equal to zero right so either it should form the basis for a totally symmetric representation or it should form the basis of a reducible representation which in turn should contain at least one ir representation okay so when would that be? So let's say if FA forms the basis of tau A and FB forms the basis of tau B, right? So in that case, the matrix representation for FA, FB will be given by tau a direct product tau b right and tau a tau b direct product will have totally symmetric representation tsr only when a is equal to b and will never contain a TSR when A is not equal to B, right? So that means direct product of a IR representation with itself will contain totally symmetric representation. So that means FA and FB should form or must form the basis for same IR representation. Then only the integration will survive. Otherwise, the integration will go to zero. So for example, in the case of C4V, when we calculated a direct product of E cross E, we saw that it can be reduced to a1 plus A2 plus B1 plus B2. So that would mean that my if FA 
forms the basis of E and FB forms the basis for E in this particular case then I will not be equal to 0. Otherwise if F A and F B are forming basis for two different representations then I will be equal to 0. So the problem is now very simplified. All we have to do is given a function we have to find out what is the irreducible representation to which that particular function is forming the basis of. right? If the two functions are forming basis for a same representation, the i will not be equal to 0. If the two functions are forming basis for two different representations, i will be equal to 0. right? So very simple now. So now let's also look at in the same way, let's also look at integration of triple product whether it will be equal to 0 or not. So this will not be equal to 0 when direct product of the representations tau a, tau b and tau c assuming that f a is corresponding to tau a, f b is corresponding to tau b and fc is corresponding to tau c must be or contain the totally symmetric representation right so either they form a totally symmetric representation or they must contain totally symmetric representation at least once and when is this possible this is possible only if representations of the direct product of any of these, any two of these is or contain the same representation as given by the third function so let's try to digest this so what we are saying is that if there are three ir representations corresponding to these three functions then the direct product of all three must contain totally symmetric representation so this is possible if two of this if the representation of the direct product of any two of these functions let's say tau a into tau b must contain tau c right or tau b into tau c must contain tau a and so on so let us see how it works so let's say if we have f a is the basis for tau a f b is the basis for tau b and f c is the basis for tau c and we have what we are trying to calculate is direct product of tau a and tau b that may contain a1 times tau c plus a2 times tau i plus a3 times tau j and so on so now then if we calculate the triple direct product now tau b tau c then this will be a1 tau c plus a2 tau i plus a3 tau j direct product tau c now if you see a1 tau c direct product tau c plus a2 tau i tau c and so on so this is the only one which will give you a1 or let's call it as tsr totally symmetric representation none of the other direct products because they are direct products between two different ir representations they will never give 
a1 that is the totally symmetric representation so you will get totally symmetric representation only from direct product of tau c into tau c so that means tau a into tau b must contain tau c right so only if tau a into tau b contains tau c then we have a1 present in the system and if we have a1 present in the system we can say that the integration of fa fp fc is invariant under all symmetry operations if it is invariant it behaves like a even function and the integration is not equal to zero right so that is the point what we are trying to make so let's say now let's try to see where this particular integration is useful so in energy of a particle in calculating energy of a particle or energy between two states and so on so let's say in quantum mechanics we often come across with the integral where we have to calculate energy of a particle like how do we do that so we know this equation h psi equal to e psi and what we can do is we can multiply we can write this thing equation write it like this let's say this is star and psi j star psi i this will be equal to a right so now this is the energy of the interaction between the states psi i psi j and psi i right so now how to solve this integration now so let's say so now we have to estimate or rather calculate what is the ir representation to which psi j h and psi i are forming the basis right so let's first talk about h so we know that h is hamiltonian right so we know that h is invariant under all symmetry operations we have seen that earlier right all symmetry operations so we have seen that h and r commute with each other right that means it will not matter whether we are first operating the symmetry operation or first doing the energy estimation this would mean that h will remain invariant under all the symmetry operations that means h will form the basis of totally symmetric representation right so that means now if we know tau j and tau i then this does not actually matter because this is always tau a a is the totally symmetric representation right so this would imply that if psi i and psi j belong to same ir representation only then totally symmetric representation can occur in this product so to know whether this integration will go to zero or not we need to identify whether these two will form basis of same ir representation or not if they form basis of same ir representation then tsr will exist in this product if tsr will exist the integration will be non zero so that means there would be finite energy otherwise the integration will be equal to zero if these two form basis of two different ir representations and then we can say that the energy of interaction between the two states is zero right so this whole if numerator goes to zero the whole thing goes to zero all right okay so 
so that is it so we can estimate the energy of the particle so let us do a quick or let me give you a quick assignment let's do a home assignment to see if you can follow this otherwise we can always discuss in the interaction session so let's say if i want you to evaluate psi lambda star let's say a p and phi v so this is a bracket notation uh, basically it means the same thing the way it is written over here but let's not worry about so this is another form you may get questions in different books so that's why i'm using this notation over here so where psi lambda belongs to e1 u and ap belongs to b2g and 5v belongs to b1g of b6h point so the three representations are given so psi lambda is even u ap is b2g and 5a is b1g so what you have to do is now you have to take the direct product of all three and see whether and then try to use the reduction formula to see whether there is a1 present or not if a1 is present or even g whatever will be the totally symmetric representation in this case if it is present then it will be equal to zero otherwise it will not be equal to zero so all you have to do is you have to tell whether this integration will survive that means will not be equal to zero or will be equal to zero okay so in next class we'll see one more application of direct product and then we'll shift gears and we'll look into symmetry adapted linear combinations so we'll see one more uh, we'll spend some more time on direct product for one more class go to next uh, topic after that all right thank you